Sarah Jordan. And I'm Scott Jordan. Yay, Margo. That's why we're here. We're here to talk about Margo. Margo is our deaf and blind standard poodle who has inspired us to start this movement called Yay, Margo. Yay, Margo. Margo was the happiest dog from the moment we met her. She was always really curious. She was always going from like, one place, place to another. Together, checking on things. She had a circus in her head. Yeah. She was very inquisitive and very active and um, very, 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 very playful. Mm -hmm. She had a, just one of the best attitudes in life that you can possibly imagine. Margo always had more fun than anybody. Yes, she did. She really did. She, and she, that didn't change after she got sick. She still took everything in stride. She was eight when she got sick. I mean, we found out that she was sick almost by accident. Chloe had cancer and she had a mast cell tumor and she had an appointment at the vet to have it removed. And I think that was on a Monday morning and that weekend, Margo was limping a little bit when we were walking, nothing major. So I called the vet and asked if I could bring Margo in as well. So they get Chloe ready for surgery, they look at Margo. Um, I remember our vet said, she has a partially torn ACL. Um, she's probably gonna need work on her knee within the next three years. So it wasn't a major deal. He gave us some anti-inflammatory, so keep her on a leash for a week or so. Let's check her next week. And our focus was primarily on Chloe because yeah. Chloe was the one who you know, was, um, you know, had cancer. So we, we had no idea. And, and, and then it developed into this, this very gross thing on her paw that looked like a, a rattlesnake bit her. And they couldn't figure out w what had caused it. And um, through a series of Yeah, it was like tests, bubbling blood and weird symptoms. And then it moved to her face. And, and we took her to West Vet in Boise, which is a specialty animal hospital that is referral only from veterinarians. We drove three hours with all the dogs in the car. Um, when we got there, she was laying on the floor, her paw bubbling, just looking. We like, thought it was, we thought, we was, thought it was end of days. And, 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 and did we leave her there yeah, at that they time? they kept her for two days. They put her on IV antibiotics. She saw a million specialists. It's a 24 hour hospital. So they're staffed with doctors round the clock and we could call at any time. I and mean, we were terrified. And Friday afternoon, we went to pick her up and there she is with her big smile, happy as a clam. She was, she Jumping just- on her sisters, um, all of the doctors, the nurses, the vet techs, the, like everyone who worked there went out of their way to tell us how special she was. And they're like, you probably think we say this about all the dogs, but no, really, she, she is just such a love. We have so much fun with her. Like she's so happy, she's so this, she's just such a great dog. So we brought her home. We were in constant touch with all the veterinarians because they still didn't know what was wrong. And then just more symptoms started happening. And a lot of them were in her eyes. I mean, one day one eye was swollen like out to here, like within an hour. And then we got special eye drops and a yeah. regimen of a whole bunch of yeah, both antibiotics and yeah. steroids and this and, and this went on for a couple, a couple of years. years and we were just managing her illness and thinking that this is it, we did receive a diagnosis uh, yeah, well, along she the way has immune mediated polyarthritis which they actually diagnosed our vet diagnosed which was the arthritis portion and then another immune mediated too complicated for me to say <laughs> that dealt with her skin her hair and a bunch of just mysterious autoimmune diseases. Um, for the first, it took a year to kind of stabilize her symptoms. And once she was stable, it was a matter of eye drops and eye gels. And unless something else cropped up, that was just our normal stuff. And other, and other than goopy eyes from all the drops and gels, she was her usual self. Then the eye stuff started getting worse. Um, How old was she around? Almost 12. And we we're at the ophthalmologist in Boise one day, and she said we needed to remove one of Margot's eyes. She didn't think she had any vision left in it. It was starting to get painful, blah, blah, blah. And you know, Scott and I were like, 
you know, what's it going to look like? When yeah, you I literally, yeah. Dollars? We're just like, yeah, that, what's it going to look like? I mean, this all is all part country. of the journey for us. So like, okay, you know, okay, she still has her other eye. Right, so we're, you know, we're like, remove an eye. It's one thing if she's blind, but that just sounded really creepy at that point. But the doctor said, you know, it'll look like a teddy bear. Yeah, I, we, I, I literally asked, I said, can we get a, a fake eyes? And they're like, really? She doesn't care. Yeah. You know? So we could have either done the surgery there or at our own vet. We chose to bring her back so she was close to home to recover. And the next morning, he removed her eye. We picked her up. And it was like nothing had happened. And the average lifespan for a standard poodle is 12 to 14 years for a healthy standard yeah, poodle. she was 11 and a half then. And so she was 11 and a half when this happened. And as you know, she lived several, a couple more years thereafter. Um, yeah. So So we bring her home. The recovery from the first eye surgery was not a major deal. It was her left eye that they had removed. So she liked me walking on her left side. And the doctor told me she was kind of using me as her seeing eye dog by having me there to block. And she adapted great it, and everything went back to normal. Until and two months later, the right eye just went wacko. Yeah, it's just like, uh, horrible, horrible. Pus, and I mean, and we're like, oh my god. And she had, she was also sick, and we took her to our vet on like a Thursday, and he scheduled us to come back in Monday. Over the weekend, she was acting really weird but everything was okay. Monday morning, I was talking to her and I said to Scott, I don't think she can hear. She could hear us on Sunday. <laughs> and we bring her into the vet Monday morning. I mean, we're clapping. And he starts and... doing that and we're all like, no, she can't hear, but she could hear the night before. And it had happened a couple of times, so we thought the hearing might come back. Her hearing didn't come back, so that Wednesday, August 4th, she woke up from surgery blind and deaf. And, and, and we said to each other, like, okay, what kind of life is this? And we, we agreed that if we were in a similar situation, so long as we could eat, <laughs> if we could eat, we're okay. We'll just sit there and eat. And Margo always loved food. So <laughs> we're like, we'll just feed her and, she, you know, whatever she wants to eat and we'll just take care of her. And so that was our philosophy. And little did we, we expect or know that not only did she eat, which she did. She did everything. Everything. She hiked. She, she did. And, she, and not only did she, she did more than the other dogs, even the puppies. It was at the point that she became blind and deaf that I started her own Facebook channel rather than just overwhelming all of my friends on my Facebook channel. And uh, that's where she got her fa following. And there was a reason why I was filming it. I needed encouragement to, uh, you know, from the community and, and help and advice. So by, by, by filming it, it made it easier for me to, to, to actually experience this by sharing the experience. And Yay Margo became a mantra. And, and that's the name of, of the books and the brand that we've developed. It's not really a brand, it's well, a we, movement. It, it came out of, we were always saying it to her, because even though she couldn't hear us. She would do something, we're like, Yay, Yay Margo, Yay, Yay Margo. So then it became an internal statement for us whenever we wanted some a little encouragement. And you know, at that point, you know, there was no, thought of you know where this was going it was a facebook page it had no commercial um purpose it was just for my own enjoyment um and to get support from the community and the like so you know i would often you can go back on her page yay margo and you'll see you know just the activities that we would do i would live stream i would take photographs i would post them and everyone was really supportive and i thought i cannot just stop sharing all these memories of margo and now her sisters and we just continued without a, a plan and then it sort of evolved into what was previously called root for margo in her page to yay margo and that the 
the brand became a, a movement, if you will, and now it, it's evolved into you know, a, a number of different products for both children and dogs. We're and developing adults. <laughs> and adults and, and, and developing clothing lines and you know these bell collars that they like, oh, wow. stuffed animals, and, and we're giving a portion of the profits to no-kill shelters. And, and it's become, for me, you know, sort of my next chapter in, in, in life because I'm leading this, this business and someone said on our Facebook page, you should create an illustrated children's book about Margot. Her lessons are really impactful and I think that children would, would appreciate that. And so on January 1, 2018, we met with an illustrator um, to begin you know, the process of a, a, a children's book. I'm very proud to, to, to show it here. It turned out freaking awesome. And, and, and Margot wrote them in your head. She did. I mean, I would sit at my desk with Margot underneath it and I'd start typing and it would just, I don't even know where it came how from. Many, how many books have you? Uh, it's 22, 23. 23 books. We've already written. And one is out and I mean, another I one is coming. I not necessarily in the woo-woo stuff other than with Margot. I did because I was willing to try anything. I swear she was sending it to my head and I just typed for her. Our relationship, I would say, with Margot as a result of her illness, um, you know, candidly, I was nervous, to be honest with you, as to whether Frankly, that you know, I'd resent the additional time and, and attention that she would require, um, and 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 I was nervous about that because I love Margot tremendously, and uh, I, I did not want it to impact my relationship with her or the other dogs. But honestly, it, it just grew stronger because the the. The, the tougher life was for her, the harder she tried, and the harder she tried, the harder I, I the more time I, I, I put into her, and, and you could see how much she really appreciated it. Mm -hmm. And the other dogs too, they, 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 would, they would look out for her. If you'd like to see more of Margot's story, please subscribe and like the channel. Yes, indeed. Yay, Margot. Yay, Margot. <laughs> Yay, Margot.